hey what's going on YouTube today's video is going to cover the installation of Minecraft server one version 1.19 I had created a video a few months back uh, it was using the GUI uh, we had an interface uh, I did have a few questions regarding if you were to run this on a server it was headless so it had no uh, user interface how would they go about that but today's video is going to cover exactly that we are going to cover the installation on an Ubuntu server and then we are going to prove that it works and I'm also going to highlight how you would get mods from maybe your Windows machine to your Linux machine all without using an interface and only using the command line. Alright before we get started I do want to point out that this video is only going to focus on the Minecraft server or the server side of it not the client side so we're going to set up the server on an Ubuntu server only using the command line. If you had any questions in regards to the client I did explain some of that in the last video. Maybe I could do another one in the future. Um, but don't waste your time if that's what you're looking for. This video is strictly the server. Although I will pull up the client, we will log into it, and I'll cover a few things there. Um, but as far as configuring the client and installing it for you and your friends, that is a entirely different video. Right, so the first step that we are going to do is we're going to update our system. I already had that done, but make sure you go ahead and do this. So sudo apt get. This is going to update the repositories uh, that you have loaded on your machine. Don't worry about this last one. I have to get rid of that. That was from a previous uh, example I was making. Um, but make sure you go ahead and do that. So when you do run your installations that you're updating from the most recent repository. So next, a very useful command is uh, we could search the repositories for different files that we may need. So for example, Minecraft, if you were to run an older or an outdated version of Java, you will get an error, which I will highlight later. Um, so if you were to use this search command, you go ahead and search what is available for you to use and then you can go ahead and download it. So just go ahead and run app. And then we'll do open JDK. And here at the bottom, as you can see here, the different versions that are available. Uh, so for the one that we are going to grab today, which I already have, it's going to be version 17. Um, but if you scroll up, you can see different versions. Um, but like I said, depending on the version that you were running and depending on the version that you have currently active it may determine if you get an error or not. So keep that in mind. This is a useful command that you can use to find the correct version. All right, so let's go ahead and copy and paste that. So we wanted this one right here. So we're going to run sudo apt get install and then we'll just paste that in there. I already have it installed as you can see here and it is the newest version available so we'll go ahead and clear that out and to show that it is the version that we are using we could do the version command and as you can see this is the version that we had just downloaded then we could also see what versions we already have installed on our system we could just use a sudo update java alternative i can never spell this and there you go. This is the different versions that are available or already installed on our system. Later, I will highlight exactly what you would need to do in order to switch between the two. But for example, if you were running this one, but you needed this one, you will get an error. They may throw you for a loop, um, which I will explain better later. All right, so let's move on to downloading the server. So if we go ahead, we can pull that up. Pull that up here. Um, you go ahead and download your Minecraft server from Minecraft Forge. There is a number of ways that you can go ahead and download this server. I am using Minecraft Forge for this video. On the left side, go ahead and pick your uh, version that you were looking for. For this video, we are looking for 1.19. Uh, and then over here in the middle is the install uh, the installer. Uh, depending on what version you're running, you might get a recommended. You may get the latest. Since 1.19 is fairly new. I guess they're not showing it. They used to show the difference, uh, but maybe it's only on the latest now. Maybe I'm missing something. But either way, go ahead and then click on this link right here. It's going to bring up an ad site. Up here at the top right is where the link is going to appear. Instead of clicking on this link, we are going to right click and then copy link address. And then we're going to go back into our Back into our shell. So here, uh, we're going to go ahead and use wget as our tool to download this. Uh, let's go ahead and make a directory. So we'll say YouTube server. 
change the directory inside of that. And then we'll go ahead and use wget. We'll post that link there or paste it, I should say. Let's go ahead and let that download. All right, now that the installer has downloaded, go ahead and list out the contents of this directory. Here's the jar file that we need. Um, before we go ahead and go any further, let's highlight the help file that is associated with this jar file. So if we use Java jar to specify this jar file, and then the help option, you can see we have several options that are available to us. The one that we are looking after today or looking for today is going to be the install server, which is install the server to the current directory. So we'll go ahead, use the previous command, delete the help and just run install server. That's it. So it's going to go ahead and install that to our current directory and we'll let that run for a minute. All right. So the installation of that jar file is complete. So we'll go ahead again and list out the contents of our directory. As you can see here, it says we could delete the installer if we wish. We could just keep it here. It's always good to keep. So in the future, if you want to maybe delete everything and then run that again, to get everything back to default, you could do so. Um, so two things to look at first is we have a run.sh. So if we were to run the ls-la, we can see that it is executable by us. And then we have this one down here. So if we list out or cat user, this is the file where you could specify various arguments for the, the jar file, the Java file. So we can specify how much RAM we want to use, to, uh, whether it's minimum or maximum. These are the options here. It also tells us here is a good default for a modded server, four gigabytes. You could uncomment this. Where'd they go? You could uncomment the next line to set it, um, which is for some reason disappeared so if we wanted to go in here we could go ahead and use vim you could use nano there's a number of uh text editor tools and we can just go ahead and comment that out and now that's there but we'll go ahead and just leave it default for now all right so let's go ahead and clear that out let's go ahead and um execute the bash script So this run.sh is a bash script, which is going to execute the server or attempt to. Then you will first run into this error, pretty much telling you that you have to agree to some terms. So if we ls the directory again, we could see we now have this right here. Let's go ahead and edit that. I will highlight nano this time, which is uh, probably an easier, more like notepad for windows for others that are not familiar with vim. So you go ahead, use nano command, Open that up and you just use your your, uh, your keys to get down to the false. We're going to change that to true. Then you're going to hit control X, save modified buffer, Y, and then hit enter. Now, if we were to cut that, you could see that the change has been made, set to true. So let's go ahead and run it again. So now we will let this do its full thing. Once it is done running, we will essentially shut it down so we can edit some uh, properties and then we will turn it back on and join the server. All right, so now we can see that the server has completed running uh, its first run through, I guess you could say. You can see it's 98% and then it says it's done and it's successful. So let's go ahead and we'll close it out using Control C. It'll say it'll stop, save player, saving the world. So no one's in there. I just want to highlight the server.properties file. In that file, we'll have the various um, options that are available to you that are running this server. One thing in particular that you will be that you need to be mindful at the very beginning is the port. Um, the port is what you need to expose to um, your friends or through your router, which is not going to be covered in this video. But look up port forwarding, and that will get you in the right direction. Whatever port is listed here is essentially what you want to forward and that will allow that port to be accessible on the public internet. All right, so we had saved that out. Let's go ahead and list it out again. Now we could see server.properties. So if we go ahead and vim that. We could use the 
forward slash and then we could search so we'll say port hit enter and these are the ports that are available or that are here um so server port right here is the one that we want to take a look at so 25565 so whatever is here is the one that you want to put on your router also the ip address which is going to be default to the machine that we are using so in this particular case um that's the ip address of this machine although i do not think that is necessary as i able to join this server without that ip address there um yeah so that's it so keep this port is what you need in order to join the server and you need to expose that using a router but for today's example we are just going to join it on the client uh, just on our local area network without exposing it to the internet so go ahead and we'll close that out and then we'll go ahead and run that again and while that is running i will pull up the minecraft and we will join it when it is ready all right, so it looks like our server is up and running. So if we go into multiplayer, let's go ahead and add the server. I already added it actually, but this is what you would do it here. So just say Minecraft server. You could put the IP address here. And again, the port number will go here. So it was a two, I can't remember exactly what it was. We'll just cancel that because I have it right here anyway. So 25565, we named it YouTube server. There's the IP address that we had listed. Again, I did not save it and that is not needed apparently. But just to prove that it works, we'll go ahead and hit join. And there we go. We are back in our Minecraft server. Version 1.19. All right, so the next uh, part of this video is I'm going to quickly explain that error that I was talking about earlier between a different Java version. So we are going to do that next. And then following that, we will quickly describe a method used that you could use in order to transfer your mod files from your Windows machine onto your server only using the command line. All right, so we are back at our terminal. Um, so the two commands that we are going to be using is the one that we used earlier. So go ahead and paste that in there again. So we want to list out the various Java versions that are our, on our system. And then we are going to use that same command, but instead of list, we're going to use set. And then let's specify the path to that version. Paste that in here. Now, if we were to run the run.sh script, we will get this error right here. Depending on what version you're running, you may get a different number here and you could google that and it'll give you some kind of direction but more often than not you'll be looking for a while so just go ahead make sure you get the right the, the right version of java um, so in this case make sure we get uh, version 17 we go back into there list it out and then we'll go ahead and set it again back to the 17 And run that run script one more time you can see that the server will start running that's that all right so the last thing that i want to talk about today is going to be the transfer of mods to our linux server only using the command line so let's say we had some mods on our windows machine so let's go ahead and go into the folder where we are holding these mods so as you can see here we have a mods folder this is all made up none of this is actual real mods but it is a good example as to what you could use so let's list out that mods folder as you can see we have a text or two mod folders mod 1 and mod 2 sorry these are text files not folders and then we have an archive which stores these two in there that is my uh, um uh, that is my method so go ahead grab all your mods download it from whatever website you would like and then go ahead and archive them into one file whether that be zip or uh, whatever you want to use and then we will grab that one file and transfer it to the linux server so in order to do that we are just going to spin up a python server 
So if you do not have Python installed, run Python 3 just by itself and it will tell you. If it is not installed, it will open up the store. Just go ahead and download that and you will be good to go. So let's go ahead and run Python 3. This is a built-in module, so we're going to run M and then HTTP server and we're going to specify a port and we will put it on port 8000. Go ahead and hit allow access. Now if we open up our web browser and we head over to this link first off let me make sure you run IP config so this is the IP address that you want to head over to so in this case it is 192.168.1.4 let's go ahead open that up in the web browser and then we will download that file all right so let's open up a new tab put this right here and we'll specify the port should open up that directory and it did not sorry because I do not have it running anymore and there we go so now we have this this is our file path our directory holding those mods um, so you go ahead and we can just right click again we copy link address now if we go into here we have a mods folder in there so we'll go into our mods folder make it look nice and then we will go ahead and use wget and we will paste that link. And now we have our mods. That's it. All right, so that is all for today's video. I hope you were able to take something away. For those that are need a little bit more information, you can go ahead and check out my last video. It will be in the description below. In that video, we covered a little bit more, but in regards to using a, a, an Ubuntu machine with an interface, in this case, this video was strictly focused on using a machine that only had command line, allowing you to get the files that you need in order to spin up your server for you and your friends. And that is it for today. Again, I hope you were able to take something away. As always, never stop learning.